You have possibly noticed this device in the background of some of my previous videos. I have been using a standard SSD for my music and Sentry videos since last year. It is a 480GB 3.5 inch SSD in a USB 3 enclosure. It has worked well so far, but I was interested in getting something even more compact for the space. I've seen M.2 SSD enclosures and wanted to see how that would work in my situation. M.2 SSDs are a different size for use directly on PC motherboards with no wires getting in the way. They can be purchased in a 500GB size for about $50 currently, which is the sweet spot in size and pricing. 500GB for Sentry Mode is great. I chose the Western Digital due to my previous experience and good reviews. Next, you also need an M.2 enclosure. Most allow USB 3 or 3.1 with a USB-C connector. I chose an aluminum enclosure since they are good at heat dissipation and look nice. This one is made by SSK. When buying an SSD to fit inside this M.2 enclosure, you need to make sure that it has a SATA 3 interface. Make sure it has an M and B key or a B key design as shown in this photo. PCIe or NVMe versions don't work with it. Let's open up the boxes and see what's inside. This is the enclosure. You can see the exterior shell has an aluminum case. The inside is plastic. There is a bag with a couple screws, a screwdriver for installing, and also a USB-C cable. Now let's see what's inside the SSD box. There is a plastic clamshell that holds the SSD, and pretty much it. By the way, it's a good idea to minimize static electricity when installing computer components. Now for the installation. Take the SSD out of the plastic container and you need to angle the SSD into the socket. Then you can press down and it will clip into the enclosure. Now you can put the aluminum cover on. Secure the cover with the included screw. Attach the USB-C cable into the connector. The other end is a standard USB-A which will fit into most PCs and laptops. Here is how the size compares to my original 3.5 inch enclosure. You can see it is much smaller. If you don't want to bother putting together the enclosure yourself, you can get pre-built units for just a little bit more. Now you need a desktop PC or laptop to configure the device. Attach the USB cable to get started. I have been using AOMEI partition for a couple years now. It is free and offers a lot of functionality. Download the free version from their website. Install it on your computer. A quick apology for the next section. My recording for the SSD did not go as planned, so I have to recreate it using a regular SD card. The process is the same. Find the device. The new drive will show that it is unallocated. Now I will set up the partitions. I personally use the device setup with two partitions, one for music and one for Tesla Cam. You can use just one for Tesla Cam if you prefer. For two partitions, choose the size that you want 
and make sure you select FAT32. Click the Apply button in the upper left hand side to start the process. Do the same for the other partition. For just one partition, use the entire memory block and choose FAT32. Don't forget to name the partitions because when you connect it to the computer later on, you can find your info easier. The great thing about using two partitions is that you only need one device to be connected to the car. Tesla will automatically record the Tesla Cam and Sentry Cam video files to the Tesla Cam partition and you can also listen to music from the music partition and you can use both simultaneously. Here you can see both partitions on OneDrive. Once formatted you are done with the software. Now start Windows Explorer and go to the Tesla Cam partition. Create a directory called TeslaCam, capital T, capital C, as all one word. For music, you can copy the files directly onto the petition for music. I personally put them in folders alphabetically by artist. The car will automatically find them and use the USB option in the car's audio section. TeslaCam and SentryCam will be able to use the SSD once connected. So basically I store my Xbox controller in this storage spot. So now this is the new SSD enclosure. It does come with a two foot long cord. So I may get a smaller cord, say one that's only this long. So let's attach it lastly to make the install a little cleaner looking and so the drive doesn't move around use a velcro command strip these are my favorite for no residue removable attachment I happen to have this one available but to better blend in with the interior use the black versions instead of the white ones Remove the tape film and then attach the command strip to the center of the enclosure. Remove the other tab and now you can attach it to the back of the storage area. Once you press it firmly against the back, you can remove the enclosure and it still has the Velcro tab on it and you can reattach it at a later time. Here's a close-up view of the finished install. It takes up very little space. It is important to press and hold the Tesla Cam button to make it go gray when you are removing the SSD from the car. If it is red, you may have corrupted files since it's still recording. When reinstalling the SSD or any flash drive, hold the gray Tesla Cam button again until it turns red. As you can see now with this complete project, I can fit the SSD enclosure along with the game controller, box of tissues, um, I also have a tray that holds my sunglasses and pens. Everything fits in nicely now. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.